Hey everybody, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a minimal and robust data science environment with Miniconda and Conda Forge. So currently the most popular way of getting started with data science using Python is to install the Anaconda distribution. So you can find that over here at anaconda.com and then the download section is provided by a company with the same name, Anaconda. So this tutorial is going to show you an alternative method to this popular way of getting started with data science. So the issue I have with the Anaconda distribution is that it provides an enormous number of uh, packages and lots of excess software that you'll probably never use. So it really bloats your system with all the software right from the, right from the beginning and it's really quite unnecessary to get started. So what, uh, what I'm going to show you is how to install the least amount of software to get you started um, in, you know, doing data science in Python. And the other goal, this is a very important goal, is to create an environment that is robust and reliable and that you can depend on to you know, install and update and remove packages successfully without a headache. So we're going to be using the Conda Forge channel uh, to help us out with that. All right, so instead of Anaconda, what we're going to do here is we're going to install a distribution called Miniconda. And as the name suggests, it is a minimal installation. And it is uh, actually less than 10% the size of Anaconda. So Miniconda only comes with Conda and Python. And, and that's it. So Conda is a command line tool. It's a piece of software and it's both a package manager and an environment manager. So it's a, it's a very nice tool. Um, a package manager is something that installs, updates, and removes third-party Python packages. And an environment manager creates environments and you know, obviously manages them. And what an environment is, is an isolated section of the file system that contains its own separate installation of Python, its own separate installation of Python packages, and is you know, very useful when you're trying to develop you know, a reliable piece of software. Okay, so uh, let's get started with uh, the, the installation. So you'll have to navigate over here to where Miniconda is, and there's an installer for each of the three major operating systems. This tutorial is going to focus on Mac OS X over here. So I've already downloaded the, you know, the command line installer, which is this first bash installer, and the graphical installer down here. Either one will work. So I'm not going to actually run through the actual installation, but I'll show you the command that does it. So in my downloads folder, I have each one. Um, I could just double click this one to do the graphical installation. You simply just have to uh, use the defaults. For the command line one, it's a little bit different. So this command would execute it. I'm not going to execute it. It does take about a, only about a minute to, to get through. So uh, you'll have to manually uh, go through and accept the license agreement and say yes to a couple questions to um, you know, uh, initialize everything and to install it in, in your home directory. Okay, so I'm not going to uh, run through that, but that's how you would get started, uh, just accepting the, the defaults. All right, so what, uh, what Miniconda does, and Anaconda, by default, um, is that it will, uh, whenever you open a shell, is that it will place you inside the base environment. Um, oh, so <clears throat> moving back one step. So just to check and verify that your installation works, I recommend running a command called conda list. So conda list should show you all the packages that were uh, that have been downloaded. So you might be surprised to see so many packages. Um, so so there actually are uh, a few packages that conda relies on. So it's not actually just conda and Python. It does. Uh, provide a few more third-party packages but if you would if you were to install Anaconda you would see that it would install many many more uh, than just this along with uh, lots of other software on your system so there's not any excess software here it's just Python Conda and these packages right here now um, uh, it will be located in your home directory so I'm in my home directory right now so if I uh, you know print out the working directory I'm in uh, my home directory and if I look at the contents of the home directory, directory, you'll be able to find exactly where the installation is located. So that's where it is. Um, we could look in there and see all the contents of that. Um, the other thing I want to show is that whenever you, ins whenever you, you know, first install this, uh, you know, Conda will append 
the location in your file system uh, where this base environment is located. So let me just uh, show you this by, by outputting the path variable. So if you're not familiar with the path, it is simply a list of locations, you know, list of directories on your file system where the command line can look for executable files. So what Conda has done, it'll append two paths, or excuse me, two directories to your path to the beginning of your path. It'll, um, you know, they'll both be inside of the mini Conda uh, folder. One will be bin and one will be Conda bin. So it is this, um, it is, uh, it is this bin folder where the the base environment is located and where all these uh, executables, um, you know, are. So if we look inside this bin folder, uh, inside mini Conda, you'll be able to see all these, all, so there are a bunch of executable uh, files that you can run. As you can, this is actually how you, this is actually where Python, you know, is located itself, along with uh, several other things that are necessary um, for Python and for Conda. So we, we never actually have to be inside this folder to, to actually execute any of these files. Since it's, this folder is appended to our path, we are um, able to automatically you know, execute anything that's in here. So one other thing that you'll uh, wanna do to check, uh, verify the installation is just simply to start uh, you know, Python, the interpreter right here. So you should get the, the version you know, that you downloaded, in this case it's uh, Python 3.7. Now, to, to uh, more explicitly verify, you can do this uh, with help from the sys library. So I'm actually gonna run just a tiny amount of Python code. So I'm gonna import sys, and then there's a attribute called executable, and this will show me the location in my file system where Python is running. So I can be absolutely sure that I'm not running Python anywhere else that I've maybe previously downloaded. It's definitely in Miniconda in this bin uh, directory uh, right here. So that's exactly the executable that is running right now, that is executing my Python code that I just typed. So let me go ahead and exit out of here. So um, one thing that I don't like is that it's that I don't like this base. I don't like to have a, um, I don't like to have an, an, an environment activated for me. And I think it's better to explicitly activate Conda environments so that you get in the habit of, you know, doing things purposefully and not just uh, having these things appended to the, to your, you know, path for you. So, um, in this way, uh, you know, if you're more explicit, I think it'll lead to less errors. So there is a way to configure your Conda installation so that it does not automatically activate the, uh, this base path or this base environment. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this command. It's a called conda fig, and uh, it's called conda fig. Uh, then we're going to set this uh, auto activate base, uh, this auto activate base variable to false. So this is gonna change a configuration file um, that we can look at later to um, and not act, not auto activate it. So hopefully that's uh, fairly clear. So we just run that. Uh, and we open up a new shell, we'll see that we are no longer, uh, the base is no longer activated. So I highly recommend, um, you know, I highly recommend doing this just so it forces you to, I think it keeps your path cleaner and it forces you to actually activate, um, you know, an environment. Now, the only thing that you have available now is Conda. So if I type in Python now, you'll see that it's actually going to run my system Python. So this actually just came with my computer whenever I purchased it. So all of Macs and I believe most Linux installations will have some version of Python automatically running. And that's the one that will execute um, uh, you know, if you do that now. So now that my base environment is not activated, I get the system Python. And if you're on a Windows machine, you probably don't even have Python. So this would just um, yield an error. So I can go ahead and exit out of here and uh, go back over here. All right, so yes, we can still, uh, I can show you one thing. You can activate the base environment with this conda activate command. And actually, so before that, let me echo the path one more time. So now you can see explicitly that that first mini conda bin directory is no longer there. 
So um, if we look inside this conda bin, you'll see that you'll see that only the only uh, the, the only executable that is that's available to me is conda itself. So all those other dozens of executables are no longer available. Those were the ones that were located you know, in this bin directory. This is no longer in my path, so none of these are available to me. So it's a this uh, you know cleans up your path. It cleans up uh, you know all the commands that are available to you, and it, you know forces you if you really want to do you know execute Python, then you have to activate the uh, you know the activate a channel or excuse me activate an environment. So the way we do this is with a conda activate command, and we will activate the we can activate the base, and then if we echo the path again, you'll see that now it is prepended um, this the bin directory again. So all of all, you know, if I run Python again, I'll be back at Python 3.7. All right, and then we can, there's a deactivate command and that will get us, that'll remove the path again and bring us back to where we started. Okay. All right, so, um, all right, so uh, whenever we, uh, so we, 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 we still have this minimal installation, we have not set up any environment. Now, what I wanna show is something called is uh, talk about right now is called conda channels so a conda channel is simply a you know repository filled with python packages and it's a channel where you will be able to install packages from so anytime you install a new package it will come directly from a conda channel so you so by def by default uh you know conda provides a default channel with lots and lots of Python packages. And you can determine what this is by looking at, by running this command. So if I do this show channels, I get to see all the channels that I have. In fact, I only have one channel. It's a default channel. And these are, you know, hand-picked libraries that are, you know, generally the most popular and most useful for doing scientific computing. So, you know, uh, the team at Anaconda has curated this list. Uh, and place all these you know, uh, packages uh, over here. Now, what's kind of interesting is that you can actually look, if you run the conda info command, and you look over here, you can see that, it's a little difficult to see. So we see over here, you can actually see the URL where, the, you know, where, where these packages are located. So I can just go ahead and click over here and you know, so this is this is literally the page where it scoops up the packages and will install them from. So there's, um, you know, there's many different versions uh, of uh, of these packages, and this is exactly the place where. It's, so this is the repository you're looking at, sort of the behind the scenes of where it is actually located. Okay, so let's go back over here. All right, um, now there's uh, so the 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 conda the the default channel does work. Uh, you know, fine, but uh, you know, in my opinion, there's a better channel. It's called Conda Forge. So the Conda Forge channel is a uh, you know, it, it's a channel that has many more packages, and it uh, what it does is it 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 works hard so that they're all very compatible with one another. There's going to be uh, you know, at the time of this video. It, it appears that there's less compatibility issues with different versions and a lot of so there, there can be compatibility issues whenever um, you know one channel will comp you know whenever whenever one channel builds one package with some certain C library uh, and another channel builds a you know this you know a different package with a different C library you can have some binary incompatibilities so my suggestion is to stick with one channel. And I believe at this time, the most robust channel is the Conda Forge channel. So if you get all your packages from one channel, it's just more likely that they will all be you know, compatible and they'll all play nice uh, with one another. So what we're gonna do is actually just use this uh, Conda Forge channel um, instead of the defaults. Okay, so uh, we're not going to install any packages yet. What we're gonna do first is we're going to create uh, a new environment. So you do have a base environment whenever you first start, uh, you know, whenever you first install, you know, uh, you know, finish the installation of Miniconda. 
But I'm going to suggest just, you know, just starting a completely new environment just for data science. Leave the base environment alone. This way we can have full control over it. We know exactly what's in there and we can more easily, uh, you know, change the channel. So the way we're going to do this is we're actually going to begin by creating a completely empty environment. And we're going to call it minimal DS. So the way you create a, uh, an environment is with this conda create command. Dash N stands for name, and we're going to name it minimal DS. So this will be a completely uh, empty uh, pack or empty channel, or sorry, empty environment with no packages in it, no Python, nothing in it. So it takes a, a couple seconds, and it tells you where in your file system this environment is going to be created. So it's right there. All right. So it tells you. Uh, so once you've created it, you have not the the environment is not activated. So if we echo the path, you'll see that you know we're still just have this conda bin. So we only have conda available to us. Now we will. Uh, so if you activate this minimal DS environment. So now we're in our active environment. And if we echo the path again, you'll see that we have instead we have this uh, it, not, not just miniconda slash bin, we have miniconda ends, which is you know where all your environments are located, and our environment slash bin. So that's where um, that's where our executables are going to be uh, over there. So that's nice. So we've we've activated the uh, environment now. So there's no packages installed. And to really make this robust, I want to make it so that only packages from Conda Forge are, uh, we're only going to use the Conda Forge channel to install packages. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to have to add the Conda Forge channel to our list of channels to, to search for. So the way we do this is do Conda config dash dash add channels Conda Forge and Actually, I want to add this only in my environment. So what this is going to do is we're going to say uh, we're going to add the Conda Forge channel just to this environment. So this uh, this env uh, option will add it only to this particular environment. So I'm going to run this, and I've added it to uh, to my environment. So now if I run Conda config show channels, I will see that I have Conda Forge added to my list of channels. So Whenever you add a channel, it's going to be the it's going to place it in order on top of the defaults. All right, and what it also does is it creates a, a what's called a conda configuration file. So for this particular um, for this particular environment, so there's uh, this is a, a dot conda rc file, and let's go ahead and look at the entire contents of this little file. So this sort of saves like configuration settings just for your environment. So the way uh, this is located in, uh, yeah, so it's in my environment where it's uh, uh, in minimal underscore DS. It's in this dot conda RC file. And so it just basically prints out exactly what I've seen over here, but this is the, you know, the actual file location where it is. So you can, you can see it explicitly. All right, now, one interesting thing about uh, adding a channel is that um, you would expect that if you're going to install a package now in this environment, it would always use Conda Forge since that's the first one listed. Well, that's actually not true. So what Conda does is that it'll if a package exists both in Conda Forge and the defaults, it will install a package that has the highest version. So for instance, if pandas is located in Conda Forge and in defaults, but has a higher version in defaults, it will actually install install it from the defaults channel. So that's a um, maybe a little bit unintuitive. So you can change this behavior by running another configuration command. So we're going to do this only in our environment, and we're going to set this channel priority to strict. So this is the key thing. So we're going to change this variable channel priority to strict. So what this does is it will not look at the default channel unless a package does not exist in Conda Forge. So even if they are both, if they if a package exists in both and it's higher version in defaults, it will not look at that. And we can look at our configuration file to see that in fact um, it has added one more line to it. 
All right, so now we can actually install our packages. So we've set up the environment properly. This was the key step. We made Conda Forge our number one channel, or def you know, not I shouldn't say default, our, our primary channel. Uh, we made the channel priority strict so that you know it, it will always use Conda Forge if a package is located in Conda Forge. It will still use defaults if there's a package that's not found in Conda Forge. So, um, and there is a way to um, stop that from happening, but uh, uh, we will let that go uh, in this tutorial. I do have notes on that. All right, so the last thing to do is to actually install our packages. So we're gonna run this conda install command, and we're going to just name the list of packages that we'd like to install. So for a minimal uh, installation, I like st uh, installing pandas, scikit-learn, uh, mat, Plot lib and the Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so this will uh, install these four packages plus all their dependencies. So you might be wondering where NumPy is, but NumPy is a dependency for um, at least the first three of these packages. Um, and SciPy is a dependency for scikit-learn. And there's actually many, many more packages that will get installed, but this is a what I would consider a minimal set of Python packages to do a large amount of data science work in to just get you started. So I'm going to go ahead and um, execute this command. And since I've already set up my environment correctly, it will only look in Conda Forge unless one of these packages uh, doesn't exist or one of the dependencies doesn't exist in Conda Forge. Then it will look into the defaults channel. So uh, what I've done here while we're waiting for this, so I, I've talked a lot. Here are the, uh, here are all the steps, and we'll uh, wait till that uh, finishes downloading. But here are all the steps, uh, all in one go. So the first step is to you know just install Miniconda you know, from the website. The second step was to you know um, make the auto activate base false. The third step, um, yes, we just created an empty environment. Uh, we uh, activated this environment. And then we made sure that Conda Forge was the first channel. So we added that channel and then we set the ch uh, channel priority to strict. And then finally we installed uh, you know, all the packages to do data science work in. All right. And it's still, uh, yeah, so there's quite a lot of, there's, there's actually quite a lot of uh, dependencies, even though we only installed the uh, four packages. So you'll still have a, a fairly large installation here, but there'll be a, a lot less, um, there'll, there'll be uh, quite a bit less than uh, what you would get with, with Anaconda. So from here on out, you can always work inside the minimal DS uh, you know, environment to do your data science, and you'll be downloading and installing packages from the Conda Forge uh, repository. All right. Okay, so that that uh, essentially does it for for this. You can uh, you can check the installation um, by running a few commands. Um, the, the last thing, and since I'm still waiting for this, is that, so if a package is not, of if a package, you try to install a package uh, that is not available if, on Conda Forge or the defaults, you have to specify the channel explicitly. So I have an example here. Um, this Plotly Express library is not found on Conda Forge. It is not found in the defaults. It's in a channel called Plotly. And you can actually search for it. If you go to anaconda.org, you can go to the search bar and you can look for packages and it'll tell you which channel it's located in. So I've just typed in Plotly Express and there's three, uh, it looks like there's there's three channels that have you know had the package. 
you'll probably want to use the one that has been made uh, explicitly for it, which is Plotly. So if you click over here, uh, you can actually see all of the Plotly packages that are available um, through the, or all of the packages that are available on the Plotly channel. So these are these are all the uh, the packages that it uh, curates. All right, good. So this finished, and now um, I do want to show one more thing, and you should, uh, you know, you should definitely verify this. So now we can actually run a a Jupyter notebook. So we can just go ahead and run this. So I, I did install the Jupyter notebook, and we can just. But what you should do is it is is create a new notebook, and then the one thing I would recommend doing here is to make sure that you are actually running the correct uh, installation of Python. And we did this earlier, but you'll be surprised that you can actually get a different result within the Jupyter notebook. So for us we have the correct location. So we're inside our minimal DS environment and that's exactly where the Python installation is located. Now, the reason I do this in a Jupyter Notebook is that this is very unfortunate and very surprising in that Jupyter allows you to execute Python installations in different environments. So this is actually possible if you have what's called a user uh, kernel. So uh, yes, so a user kernel is uh, takes precedence over any environment kernel. So I do have an environment kernel um, that I can execute Python with. But if there's a user kernel and I don't have a user kernel on this machine, it will that will take precedence, and you'll actually be running from the base environment. So a very bizarre sort of like uh, you know. Uh, you know, surprising thing that can occur that you might not even be aware of. You might have created an environment, you might have created a notebook and expecting to be running all your code within a particular environment when you're in a Jupyter notebook, but you'll be, um, uh, you know, you might be, you'll definitely be surprised if it's, if it's not in that particular environment. So one thing to do to test this, and now I'm in a new window, so I need to activate it again, is to run the command Jupyter kernel spec list. So this will list out where the kernel is. So it should say it should be inside of your environment. If it is not, that is bad and that is probably means it's in the user location and I do have a link uh, in the blog post that is on this that will show you um, you know, sh show you the, that location and, and how to remove it. So there will be a, there's a very simple command to remove the user uh, kernel, and that will bring you back to the environment kernel, so you can correctly use your Jupyter notebook um, using the Python installation in your environment. Okay, so that uh, that actually wraps it up. You're 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 good to go with a minimal installation uh, using primarily the ConduForge channel. Um, and you have a uh, you know very robust environment that you should be able to easily uh, install and update and remove packages um, without much much hassle, and you'll save yourself quite a lot of uh, disk space as well. Now, if you're wanting other you know software from Anaconda, you can download that with Conda, and that's not a problem. So you're not missing out on anything. You can always get everything else that's not available uh, for you with the Mini Conda installation. All right, so that's it. Uh, for for the OSX tutorial on creating a minimal and robust uh, programming environment to do data science in.